Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. I'm glad you're all here. Today we're going to go through 10 knives from my collection um, that I've kind of picked out that are going to be small, but they're yet going to be meaty, i.e. they can be used for not necessarily, this will be the smallest on the list, this is the little hawk trout from Tops, or the Crowhawk, I'm sorry. So even though this is a small knife, um, I apologize guys, even though it's a small knife, it's got a very thick, full tang, so it's gonna be, it's also got the treated blade, um, so it's gonna be a hard work small knife, i.e. prying, i.e. chipping away at stuff, i.e. carving away at stuff, it's a pretty thick little guy. Um, it's a short little knife, but just to give you an idea, it is .1385 blade stock. Um, it's tool steel, and it is treated um, with that granular uh, Cerakote type of rough coating. Um, made in America, a little guy with G10 handles and G10 liners. I really like it. I wear it as a neck knife. Um, this sheath has great retention. It's small, but it's thick, right? So it's going to give you some extra oomph on the trail, around the campsite, or whatnot. And you'll see a theme develop here as we move through some of these. So coming in at number nine on the small yet beefy list is the Essie Candura. I actually prefer this little knife a little bit over the tops uh, Crowhawk only because it's a perfect three finger knife for me and the balance is spot on. It has a really nice, again, coated tool steel blade made right here in the USA. Again, it's a small knife in length, but in thickness and stature, it's also coming in at point 133. So good size blade stock, nice little thick edge, kind of a scandy grind here, very sharp, very slicey. We should probably be doing that too. Keep in mind these are smaller blades, but they are all set up whether you're skinning game or you're cutting out in the woods. They all need to be cutters, right? So we move from number 10 with our Tops uh, Crowhawk to number 9 with our SE Candura. I love this little knife. I wish the sheath was better. Um, to number 8. Number 8 is probably the best value in this bunch. This is the LT Wright Frontier First. The Frontier First is a little bit smaller model than the Frontier. But this little knife came in with this leather sheath which is the downside for me, but I can't actually wear this on my belt and it's short enough to where it doesn't get in my way when I sit down, kind of wearing around four o'clock my back hip. But this is a little Magna Cut Bushcrafter's knife. This spine is so sharp, it will strike a ferro rod like nobody's business. You can see these burns around here, they're all from this little knife, but it is very thick. It is very able. It has got full-size handle, very nice roughed up 12,000.1210 back here, but you can see how sharp that spine is. If we were gonna look at the micarta handles, you're at 0.66 inches. So over a half of an inch, which gives you just a great purchase on a small little magna cut knife that cost me under a hundred bucks and it's got all the finesse in the world for not just using it as a small EDC caper so to speak but a harder use small EDC knife and that comes in I believe we said number eight and that is our LT Wright Frontier First they also have a Frontier that's a little bit bigger the Frontier First is their baby model Coming in at number 10, 9, 8, number 7 is going to be this unique knife here. 
I've currently got it set up on an ulti clip. It is a smaller knife than some of my bigger, heavier knives, but it is S35VN. It does have nice, blade, thick blade stock. Has a super, super tall, flat ground blade, making it not only a wonderful chopper, camp knife, kitchen knife, prep knife, skinning knife, you name it. I mean, this little Corvid S could be used as a chopper, a very effective chopper. It could be used as a skinner. It could be used as a detail knife or just your everyday cutter. Comes with this little sheath that had kind of a wonky clip on it, but I was able to change it out with an ulti clip. So now I can carry it inside my pocket, inside my waistband, typically inside my back pocket, lock it into place, pulls, great retention, fantastic knife, not a very expensive knife from concept. This is the Corvid S. This is the one with the uh, marble carbon fiber handles and the S35VN, but a great little knife. So moving on, I believe that brings us to number five, is that right? And guys, I could not leave out this little beefy knife that I really had no love for when I traded Shane Chain for it, and it had those diamond patterned uh, G10 scales, it just kind of bit into my hand. It hurt my hand. Um, and then I ordered these micarta scales and then embarked on the most difficult scale swap I've ever encountered, where I literally had to break the two bits that came with my new set of hardware to try to get the old hardware out. It was so Loctited. Then I had to trace the bits to Amazon, buy a pack of 24, 12 of which, because I had to double side them, 12 of which snapped before I got them to crack loose with heat, with the um, soldering iron. But once it was all done, these scales fit this knife amazingly well. This is my only knife in Rex 45, and I can tell you it's a screaming sharp edge, but it's also got a very able geometry very thick behind the edge, so it is definitely a, uh, a pokey, breechy knife, should you need it to be, 0. 0.420, and then taking it down behind the edge from a slicey standpoint, it's going to get down to about 0. 0.0280, so a very able field knife, very able EDC knife, very able cam knife, hike knife, you name it. One thing I didn't like at first was the sheath, but I've really kind of grow to it because I wear an inch and a half inch belt. I don't wear an inch and three quarter, and I can just run my little basically work belt, this belt right here, through it, and it'll wear on my back just fine. So that's how I've been carrying this, or I'll just drop it in my pocket. But this is the uh, Guardian 3 Bradford Rex 45. Moving on, we come to number five, right? So number five is going to be this little banger right here. This is the TKL Combatant. Guys, TKL made this list twice. TKL, to me, is the quintessential Tactical, hard use, EDC defense knife made in my neighboring state of Georgia, doing it as well as anybody else. I'm a huge fan, and this is the Combatant. The Combatant is one of the smaller knives, but as you'll notice, it's got this very thick spine. And Lester's name on there, Lester Ganton might be one of the designers of this bad boy but just to give you an idea of blade stock this is coming in under a quarter of an inch but at 0.17 so it is uh it is again getting thicker you've got this very tactical swedge beautiful flat ground 
CNC milled out, grind, um, Nitro V, um, just a just a beautiful, beautiful game. Excuse me. It's a ADCRV with a nitron borite coating. That's, that's what it is. I messed that up. Made in the USA. And guys, that ADCRV goes through a very extensive heat treat process. Tim has got this dialed in. When you add this nitrite boron onto these parts where it looks washed, these are the same type of chemicals they use to coat the interior and exterior, the moving parts of PPUs. So it is a very resilient coating to both wear, to hard use, and it adds about 80 HRC to the final ruggedness of that blade. But this is the TKL Combatant, one of my favorites, small, got it on a deep concealment carry clip, and that will bring us to number four. Number four is a fantastic knife with a shitty sheath. And it's only shitty because, again, my belt, I have to run it through this loop and carry this knife on my side like that. Vertical, right? And believe it or not, it carries okay. I don't want to be dictated. I don't want to send this out for a Kydex or a leather sheath necessarily. It's a big knife. It's a small knife, but it's a heavy knife. And as you guys can tell by looking at the spine thickness, it is a thick knife. So I've actually got two of these that use the same sheath. So this is coming in at over a quarter of an inch blade stock, guys. This is a Midgard Messer. This is the Ratuk. The Ratuk. .0340, roughly behind the edge. Very nice S30V, small knife with a little bulbous handle and some really nice jimping. The knife feels great in hand. You can utilize it in a lot of different grips. The only drawback is this sheath. The sheath has great retention. The knife flies from the sheath when you want it to. It's just dictating, unless you're going to molly it to your pack, that you're going to be carrying it vertical. But I still love this knife. I've also got it in a drop point. That's how much I like it. Coming in at number four, it is the Midgard Messer Ratuk, which will bring us to number three. Number three is a little banger, guys. This is the 2023. The 2024s are just getting ready to come out. I've been following uh, Shed Knives on Instagram, and I know that they've got their grind coming up a little higher. I'm looking forward to picking one up when they become available. Uh, I think the Skur, this small one, has kind of been my favorite, and I think I want to try another 2024 Skur. Um, CPM 154, just a beast of a knife. Very small, very short, but, however, very much a thick boy. So this one's 0.2235, not quite as thick as our Midgard Messer, but when you look at the handle and you look at the overall weight, I think you're going to find this knife weighs in considerably more than this knife. But this is a great knife, locally made by Jack Billings, Skur Knives. He has about eight, nine models now. Sheath works great. I have two of his models. I bought the Skur, and then I bought the Conquest shortly thereafter. But that's number three, bringing us to number two. It is the second TKL knife, because they are bruiser knives, in this collection. And probably the hardest use, definitely the hardest use TKL in my collection. This is the TKL Outer Limitless Accomplice. This is a... a Derek Outer Design, I always get that name messed up, in collaboration with Tim Suzanne, has the same micro milling on that beautiful flat grind. You've got this beautiful micro mill swedge. You've got this 90 degree, very crisp spine here. You've got the G10 grips that on any one of Tim and Suzanne knives, 
you can swap out the grips that you want, but they're all very well ergonomically molded to fit a hand. Um, they, they just do it so well. And guys, this knife sharpens up so well, the ADCRV, you can get it screaming sharp. All I use for this particular knife and most of my fixed blades is my little uh, work sharp field sharpener. I've got a TS Prof um, Blitz 360 with all the bells and whistles. I use it for some of my folders, but I'm really working on hand sharpening and using this knife, that guy, that high grit or low grit, yeah, high grit diamond, and just letting it work out, the little chips and inconsistencies. It's a very, very friendly knife to uh, keep maintained in the field and it holds an edge very, very well. It's a thick knife, it's a big boy, but it works. Great hiking knife, great camping knife, dare I say, great EDC primary carry. Which can only bring us to one, right? Number one, my favorite beast of a knife, guys. Uh, maybe because I'm still on the honeymoon phase with it, but I think it's because it's just a really badass knife. This is made by my buddy Dustin Driver over at Driver Defense. He's about 45 miles away from me in my little windy state of Alabama, and he makes folding knives, he makes slip joints, he makes fixed blade knives. My buddy A to Z EDC bought one of his folding knives that I just had the absolute joy of being able to bring it in review and it was an amazing knife and so I started following Dustin on uh, Instagram and knew he was going to be in Nashville in 2023 and I was curious what he was going to bring we talked back and forth via DM and he said he was going to carry some fixed blades he's working on some smaller fixed blades which in all truths this is a little bit larger than my small fixed blade but it was definitely small enough to be a driver defense knife that I was very interested in it's called the Splinter. I want to say this knife in G10 and this Magna Cut that I think's finished at 65, 64, 65. He had five of these. I want to say they were 360 bucks each. And I grabbed the one I wanted because I'd been picking through the six he had before I even got to Nashville, knowing that if he had this one when I got there, I was going to buy it first. Um, and I didn't have a big budget, but I knew I wanted this fixed blade and I'm so glad I got it. It's a great knife, magna cut, super, super slicey. Dustin is a meticulous maker, meticulous sharpener, meticulous guy, customer service legend. Um, he's looking for lifelong knife customers, right? He's looking for our kids and our grandkids to buy knives from him. And if he keeps up what he's doing, I have no doubt that that's what Dustin's going to be doing. His work, his family life, his family's involved with his business. They're always at the booth with him. Kind of warms my heart to see them all kind of getting in there, working around the family business, and it's such a skill. But yeah, guys, these are my 10, we'll call them beefy yet small EDC fixed blade knives when you need something not really to crack a head, but maybe to crack a coconut or crack into a, a door that somebody didn't have the key from the cabin that we were going back to. But yeah, guys, that's it. Got a couple more we'll leave out, but I appreciate y'all taking the time. Check out my video. Check out my different knives. Unfortunately, they keep coming in, guys. Um, I love them all. I love all of you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Channel members, thank you. People coming in for the first time, thank you. If you want to help me grow the channel, please don't be shy and hit that inclined or hit that subscribe button and that bell notification if you're so inclined. Really help me out. You don't get spammed. You're just notified when I update new content. But guys, please look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. And please, choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.